It's Santa Rosa Mine Road, El Bacaro Road. If you're familiar with the area in Thank Paris, you. you've probably already got that warning and mm -hmm. have been told to leave. But Gil, this started at 15 acres. You said it held pretty steady there and it looks like it's contained to this home, which you never want to see a loss of home. But so far we haven't heard of loss of life or any injuries and you feel for those firefighters working so hard out there in that heat. Absolutely, Sam and Pedro. I'm just getting an update from our uh, assignment desk. They're saying that Cal Fire is saying this has burned 50 acres, five zero acres. Five zero. So uh, that's quite a quite a change there. But yeah, moved pretty quick there. And yeah, you're right. It is. Uh, it looks like for the most part, the fire. Uh, this is the bulk of the fire right here in these two properties that I thought were going to be safe. But you know that wind picked up a little bit, got into those vehicles, and unfortunately spread to those properties really quick. Yeah, it spread pretty quickly. Again, those evacuation orders are south of Santa Rosa Mine Road, east of El Bancaro Road, uh, west of Maywood Club Road, and also uh, north of Rocky Hills. This is in the unincorporated area of Paris, south of Riverside. As you're seeing homes, uh, several homes and other structures, looks like they have uh, been destroyed here from the looks of this fire. Crews are in a defensible, disp uh, defensible I guess, um, position at this point, making sure that those homes to the west don't get um, any uh, embers sent their way that could spark another wildfire. But if they can keep this contained, that's at least some good news, uh, especially after learning how fast this, this fire grew from just 15 acres to 50 acres, as Gil mentioned in the last update. Uh, it is certainly something we've been seeing those tankers flying, making retardant lines. And so far, it seems like those lines have been effective. And also those ground crews. We know at least 99 firefighters have been on the front lines there trying to make sure they can uh, clear any uh, brush that can catch on fire or any small fires they can put out with their hands. As you see, even one of those, uh, it looks like a line there, right, Gil? At the top of your screen, like a, um, a hose. hose line. Yeah, uh, Pedro and Sherry, you're looking at those two properties that burned and those those yellow lines there, those are hose lines. In fact, uh, early on in the fire, the, the when the fire trucks first got here, they, they did have a, a fire truck parked right about there in the center of the screen. They started pulling their hose lines into this property. None of the none of those structures, either of those structures were on fire at that point. They were setting up to protect those structures. And then suddenly the wind picked up from this area here and pushed the fire into that tree line, got into those vehicles, and that was it for those uh, structures. Unfortunately, it got into those cypress trees, and that's when it picked up into the homes. You know, Sam, Sam made a good point. You said it, it's firefighters are saying it's not fire season, it's fire year. Right. And this is why it's an important reminder to everyone who, if you live in a rural community, uh, if you live around a lot of brush, you should always have a bag packed Sorry. by the door. They always yep. tell you to always be prepared for situations just like this one. Yeah, defensible space is important. And we've seen in the last hour and a half, all these cars that have been parked along the road around these properties go up quickly. Uh, that's a lot of the black smoke we've been seeing that we're seeing it within that home. And Gil, uh, we understand there are at least four helicopters working on on this fire. We've seen six tankers go by. Are you seeing any more drops on the way? Yes, yeah, Sam, sorry about that. Yeah, definitely there are four helicopters here and tankers coming and going from this area. Now, um, uh, right now, I don't see, I'm looking over at uh, Lake Matthews where they're drawing water from uh, that lake for the water dropping helicopters. Uh, I, unfortunately, the fire's out, not out my door right now, but I don't see any, let me come to a wider shot here and see if there's any uh, air tankers in the in the area. I know they're working this spot up the hill here. That's a concern. You see they just recently dropped a fire retardant line there. The fire has crept all the way up to the very top of that, uh, that hill there and is uh, starting to burn in some of that brush there. But there really isn't a whole lot to burn up in that area. But there, again, there's some property, uh, property down below that could be in jeopardy if it was to creep down that way. Yeah. But right now, uh, I'm going to have my pilot, Anton, make a turn, Anton, make a bright turn, and uh, so I can get a better eye, eye on the fire itself. But at this point, it looks like maybe there was just a drop here, uh, or that fire actually is taking off. So with the, with the fire retardant lines here, the fire retardant just slows the fire down. It doesn't always ne or necessarily stop the fire or put it out. It will slow it down so that they can get those other aerial assets like the helicopters in here to drop on the hot spots and finally knock that down. So you can see it, a little bit of fire broke out of the fire line there, out of the fire retardant line, and is starting to spread. So that's going to be one of the spots that the helicopters, here we go, is going to uh, target for their next drop.
Yeah, they're going to target that, and hopefully uh, they can make. They've been making really great drops uh, from what we've been seeing this entire afternoon since it started. We do want to get to someone on the phone right now, the owner of a nursery, which is right down the street from where this is happening. She and her grandson were told they had to leave uh, the home. We're speaking with Rosemary Quitano. Rosemary, are you there? Yes. Rosemary, uh, how far are you away from where this fire is happening? Mm, possible and a mile. About a mile. About a mile. And Rosemary, Maybe. this area has a lot of uh, animals, large animals. You said you had to leave a nursery with your grandson. Were you scared? I, yes. Yes. How long have you had the nursery? Are, are you, is the fire getting closer to your nursery? As, have you had any damage? No, when I leave the nursery, no damage. Anything, everything okay. How did you find out about the fire? Because I see the smoke. The mountain was getting on fire. Yeah. Is that your grandson? Yes. He said the mountain was on fire. Is he doing okay too? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Okay. Rosemary, where, where do you go from here? Uh, have they told, given you guys any idea of, of where you should go? Uh, to Riverside. I, one of my daughters, she lives in Riverside. To Riverside. Uh, and yes, and we go to her house. Okay. Rosemary, what's your grandson's name? Hudson and Beckett. Hudson and Beckett. Hudson and Beckett. Well, you guys are uh, dealing with something pretty scary, but it's good to know these firefighters are keeping you guys safe. Yeah, thank you guys. No problem. And of course, we're going to keep uh, everyone updated. Rosemary, thank you uh, for calling us and we wish you the best. And firefighters, again, are, are working hard here. Where this fire is happening, the Ju Juniper fire, we want to uh, remind you guys, 50 acres right now burned, 0% contained. Uh, this is in the unincorporated area of Paris. It is south of Riverside, just west of the 215 and east of the 15. And you uh, heard Hudson you and Beckett, their sweet little voices, and we're glad they're okay. We haven't heard of any injuries but Rosemary did evacuate. Uh, maybe you're about to say that evacuation order still is in place. Zero percent containment. And uh, Pedro, I know you were mentioning as well those embers, but looks like maybe not as windy as uh, it certainly could be. And Andy, I know you were saying 85 degrees today in the area, so it's hot. Those firefighters working hard, creating a line of defensible space as it creeps up the hill. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Andy's we're, we're going to work mic. on uh, Andy's Andy's mic uh, in a quick second. Uh, you know, the thing is, is, if the winds, we don't want them to pick up, of course, because that would spread the embers. But even just gusts, even if it's not strong winds, even just gusts of wind can push those embers. And that's why these firefighters here, uh, as you see, are on the ground trying to clear any little bit of those small flames that have popped up from those embers that have. I think, uh, yeah, spread. absolutely. It's what you're talking about earlier. Where we're seeing really the cars that were burning so hot and so quickly that a lot of those embers that were moving, I mean, even though it was 10, 15 mile an hour winds, you have the topography in that area where it just, the embers don't have to really travel that quickly. They just have to be hot enough. It has to be dry enough. And if it finds fuel somewhere, which we saw in the case of all of this brush along the hillside, that'll catch on fire. And of course, fire burns uphill heat rises, and so that is an even more dangerous situation there uh, than we saw before.